Welcome to Monarch Academy, Lore Sworn Order's Guide to Crusader Kings 2. This series is dedicated to teaching you how to play Crusader Kings 2 effectively and efficiently. And today's episode is about the Council. What they can do for you, what they're going to expect of you, and how to interact with them. You can access the Council screen at any time by clicking on the Council button right up here, or by pressing F3. There are four tabs, the first of which shows what I would call your functional council positions. These are the council positions that represent people you can actually deploy out on the map to perform tasks for you. And these tasks are going to be different based on your religion and your government type. That is feudal, Muslim, Ikhda, nomad, or tribal. Today we'll focus on the feudal Christian council actions. And then we'll go over the ones for other religions and government types in a later video dedicated to those religions and government types. The first member of your council is your Chancellor. And the stat that's important for him is Diplomacy. The actions he can take include improved diplomatic relations, which will make the leader whose court you send him to think more highly of you. Fabricate claims, which can give you a justification to go to war against another Christian ruler. More about that in the video on Cassus Belli. And sow dissent, which can be used on a vassal of a top-level liege to discredit their liege in their eyes and perhaps encourage them to revolt. As a Christian ruler, you're probably going to be using this guy most of the time to fabricate claims for war. But since we're playing as William the Bastard here, and we already have a claim on the whole of England, we're just going to go ahead and send him to improve relations in Paris with our current liege, King Philippe. Once you've deployed a counselor, you can't change their job for a whole six months, which is something to keep in mind. Also, if they're currently commanding your army, they won't be able to do a council job, so you'll need to click on this button to recall them from leading any armies and forbid them from becoming army commanders in the future. Your second council position is the Marshal, and the stat that's important for him is, well, Marshal. Keep in mind, though, what I just said about councillors not being able to do council missions while they're leading armies. It's not always the best idea to put your highest Marshal courtier in the office of Marshal. It might be better to just pick someone with a skill above 8, which is the general breakpoint for this person is pretty good at their job, if you ever need a rule of thumb, and save the higher martial characters to actually be commanders of your army, which can be a much more pivotal position. The standard jobs a marshal can do are suppress revolts, which reduces revolt risk in the province where they're stationed, and also gives you a higher chance of being able to arrest a rebellious vassal if you have a reason for doing so. Train troops, which increases the size of the levy you can call from that province, and also the rate at which that levy will refill after it's taken casualties on the battlefield. And research military tech, which doesn't actually give you more military tech points, but increases the rate that military technologies will spread into this province from adjacent provinces. So, for instance, if you have much higher military tech in your capital, and you want to spread it to outlying regions, you can use your marshal to do that. Or if you're a small, less technologically advanced country, right next to a highly technologically advanced and powerful neighbor, you can put the marshal on the border to start spreading technology from your neighboring realm into your own realm. These are grayed out since our marshal, Count Richard of Evro, is currently leading troops. We're going to let him continue to do that and not assign him to a mission right now. Although, as I mentioned, it's often better to have a marshal who you know you aren't going to need as a battlefield commander so that you can have them running a military mission while your commanders go off and do their thing. The third position on your council is the steward, and the stat that is most important for them is stewardship. This is basically the money manager of your realm, and the basic missions you can send them on are collect taxes, which just increases the taxes you get from that province, oversee construction, which will allow you to build things faster in that province, and research economy tech, which works exactly like research military tech, but for economy tech. Since we're not building anything in our capital at Rouen right now, 
And we're probably going to want to save our money to build up infrastructure in England once we take it. We're just going to have him collect taxes for the time being. Your next council position is your Spy Master. And the stat that is most important for them is Intrigue. Count William here isn't actually a great Spy Master. Most of your counselors should have an 8 or above in the skill that is most critical to their position. And ideally 12 if you can find someone who is that talented. Your Spy Master is the person who can both assist you with clandestine plots and also protect you from them. Which is why it's a highly important position. You want someone with a high skill and you also want someone who likes you. More so than any other council member, a Spy Master who isn't fond of you is very likely to join plots against you. And since they're your Spy Master, basically the head of your secret service, the person you've placed a lot of trust in, they will gain a huge bonus to plot power if they gain a plot to, say, murder you or depose you. The three basic missions you can send them on are Scheme, which will give you a higher chance of discovering plots against yourself and other people in your realm. Build Spy Network, which can target a province of someone who you are plotting against and increase your chances of that plot being successful. And Study Technology, which allows your Spy Master to go to a province with a technology you currently don't have and increase the chances that that technology will spread to your capital. For the time being, we're going to send him to Scheme in our capital, just in case anybody has any funny ideas about plotting against us. The final position on your council is the Court Chaplain. The stat that's most important to them is Learning, and as you can see, Bishop Alphon here is a superb Court Chaplain, with a learning stat of 19. The basic missions they can be assigned to include Proselytize, which has two uses. The first is to convert any provinces you own that are not of your religion or have gone over to a heresy to or back to your primary religion. The second is that you can actually send your court chaplain to proselytize in the capital of any independent pagan ruler, and there's a chance that they will convert to your religion if they don't have the zealous trait. Research Cultural Tech works exactly like the Research Economic Tech and Research Military Tech missions, but for Cultural Tech, of course. And Improve Religious Relations works a lot like Improve Diplomatic Relations, except that it targets religious leaders specifically. The main uses of this are to increase your opinion among the vassal bishops and other religious leaders in your realm, or as is potentially more useful for Catholics, to increase your relationship with the Pope. You don't want to get excommunicated. And having a good relationship with him can give you access to things like being able to get divorces freely and requesting invasions of other leaders who he doesn't particularly like. The next tab on the council screen is your minor titles. The two that have a significant gameplay effect are the designated regent, who is the person who will take over the realm if you for some reason become incapable of doing so, or if you die while your child is still an heir. You're going to want to pick someone with at least good diplomacy and stewardship skill, and also a good spread of the other stats if possible. And if you have the Reaper's Due expansion, your court physician will deal with any health issues that might come up relating to you or your immediate family. Most of the rest of these are just honorary titles that will slightly increase your opinion with a given courtier. Appointing someone as a commander, of which you'll have several slots to fill, will allow them to lead flanks of your armies in battle. So a high martial stat is important, and you'll also want to make sure they don't have traits like Craven that will affect morale in battle even if they have a high martial stat. Now if you have the Conclave expansion, things get a little bit more interesting. Because your council actually forms a voting body that might have an influence over whether or not you as king can take certain actions. This is based on your council laws, which we'll go over more in the next video on laws. But basically, depending on the laws of your realm, you can be an absolute monarch and have free reign to do whatever you want, whatever you want. Or you might be beholden to the whims of your council on decisions like going to war, granting titles, or stripping titles away. Counselors can adopt a number of different attitudes based on what they think of you and their character traits. So be careful about who you select for your council. 
Loyalists will almost always vote for whatever you decide to do. They're basically free votes. Pragmatists tend to be conservative. They want what's best for the realm. They won't really support daring wars or actions that might destabilize the status quo. Glory hounds, on the other hand, are all for any actions you take that will bring more glory and power to the realm. Zealots want you to be a pious person. They'll generally oppose actions such as war or imprisonment against good followers of the true faith, but will have no qualms with you being a ruthless warmonger to those who have not accepted your way of belief. Malcontents just hate you on principle and will almost always vote against whatever it is that you want to do, unless it's something that also benefits them on an individual level. If you can't quite get your council to agree on something, it's possible to buy favors from them, which will compel them to vote your way on whatever the next thing the council is required to vote on is. Counselors can also owe favors to each other, and if you're the vassal of a higher ruler, you might scheme within the council to gain favors so other counselors will vote your way, or give favors so you will vote with another counselor on the next issue in return for some sort of tangible reward. Also don't ignore these little fist icons. This means that this person is one of your powerful vassals. And powerful vassals will always expect a spot on the council. In fact, they'll get very, very unhappy if they are not given a spot on the council. Luckily, if your ruler tier is king or higher, you'll gain two additional honorary titles called advisors. They don't have any gameplay effects like your core five council members, but they do get to vote on council issues. And it's a good way to placate powerful vassals whose skills just aren't high enough to justify giving them a position that has effects on the realm as a whole. Also, anytime your realm slips into Regency, this final slot here will be filled by the Regent, who will vote on the Council as a normal member. From this screen, you can also enforce Realm Peace, which will end all wars between your vassals. But only if the Council is content. While well, the Council is content, enforce Realm Peace is available, and Council members can't join factions against you. But if the Council becomes discontent, such as if you go ahead with a war that they all voted against, they can join factions and you lose a lot of your abilities over individual council members and the council as a whole. If you're not independent, your liege council screen will show the state of affairs with your top level lieges council. And if you're playing as a vassal, you definitely want a seat there. Currently, we do have a seat. And it looks like we are labeled as a malcontent, which is actually fairly accurate to how William the Bastard felt toward the French crown. In this position, we will be asked to vote on issues like going to war, imprisonment, granting and revoking titles, and so on, and can scheme with other members of the council to try to create clandestine voting blocks to steer the realm in the direction we want. That's about all you need to know about the council screen. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already so that you can catch the next episode when it goes up. And as always, thank you for attending Monarch Academy.